Hey, what's up everyone? It's Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2. Welcome back to your Oracle SQL tutorial series. And I know I'm overdue for a haircut, but you're just gonna have to deal with it for a little while now. <laughs> so this video is going to be a continuation of the NCHAR data type. That's because I just had a couple, few more little things that I wanted to explain before we move on to the next data types. The first thing is that when you declare an NCHAR, for example, NCHAR 50, this is always going to be talking about characters. That means the char and byte keywords do not apply for this data type. Now we've mentioned that the nchar data type uses Unicode. But remember that Oracle has multiple Unicode character sets. So what character set does nchar use? That is a very good question and I'm going to answer it. So when you declare a database, you give it a character set and what's known as a national character set. The national character set defines what character set all of the n data types are. But fortunately for me, as the teacher, there's only two options. And those options are AL16, UTF16, and UTF8. And I'm talking about the character set, not the encoding. So which one of these do you want to use? Well, I'm actually not gonna go in a whole lot of detail with that. That's because if you wanna know all of the details, you can go to the Oracle Docs page and find tons of articles on globalization of your software. I will tell you though that this one is the default. And usually the default is the default for a reason. It's because it's the one you're going to want to use most of the time. Now in a previous video, I mentioned that the char and nchar data types are sometimes not recommended for use. Why is that? And the reason is for example, char, it's actually just stored as a varchar2 with padding. There's not an underlying difference differentiating char from varchar besides the fact that if you make it char, all of the things are going to be the same length. So what I mean is that the varchar column is not going to take up extra space or be slower. And because of that, it's not very beneficial to use the char data types. And the same thing works for the nchar data types. Now I also mentioned that the n data types, so that includes nchar and nvarchar too, are sometimes not recommended. And that's just because some software systems do not work with them quite as well. But a good situation when you would wanna use the nchar2 column is if your database is of some character set other than Unicode and you have to store Unicode characters somewhere in your database. In that situation, that's exactly what the nvarchar2 column would be used for. But the char and nchar data types, they are not really recommended or needed for any really good reason. Now, before you get mad for me wasting your time teaching about these useless data types, <laughs> you have to realize that most of this information is foundational for the varchar2 and nvarchar2 data types. So that's really all I got to say about char and nchar. Hopefully the last few videos have been helpful. In the next video, we'll be moving on to something new. So thanks guys for sticking with it. And I'll see you in the next video. And as always, please be sure to subscribe and click like.